everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to be talking about the book Thrakul by Deka Stoker and J.D. Barker. Deka Stoker is the great-grandnephew of Bram Stoker, the author of Dracula, and he's also the manager of the Bram Stoker estate. Now, don't worry if you haven't read Dracul because there won't be any spoilers in this video. I'm mostly going to be talking about some of the claims that Deka Stoker makes in the epilogue of this book. So before we just jump right into that topic, just going to give you a little bit of trivia about the name. Dracul means the devil in Romanian. So just Drac on its own is devil. And then if you add the UL, Dracul is the devil. I'm not going to ruin Dracul for those of you who haven't read it, so don't worry. All I'm going to say is that apparently it's pieced together from real notes that Bram Stoker left behind. And because Dacre Stoker is the manager of the Bram Stoker estate, he of course has access to all of Bram's notes, journals and diaries. So make of that what you will, I'll uh, leave it to you if you haven't read the book. Now, moving on to the epilogue of Dracul, which is where Dacre Stoker makes some claims that I really want to discuss in this video. So, firstly, he claims that Bram originally pitched Dracula as a true story. I am now going to read to you the original prologue from Dracula, and I will let Bram speak for himself and justify himself. When Bram Stoker first brought his manuscript to his publisher in the United Kingdom, he opened the conversation with one simple line. The story is true. This is from the original preface of Dracula. The reader of the story will very soon understand how the events outlined in these pages have been gradually drawn together to make a logical whole. I have let the people involved relate their experiences in their own way, but for obvious reasons, I have changed the names of the people and places concerned. In all other respects, I leave the manuscript unaltered. There's a bit more, I'll let you read it for yourself, but there we go. Apparently, originally Dracula was pitched as a true story and featured people who Bram Stoker supposedly knew in real life. So I'll just jump ahead in the original preface and I'll just get to that bit. All the people who have played a part in this remarkable story are known generally and well respected. Both Jonathan Harker and his wife and Dr. Seward are my friends and have been for so many years and I have never doubted that they were telling the truth. Again, it goes on, but I'll let you um, purchase the book and, you know, read it for yourself. I'm not doing the audiobook here. So you get the gist. Originally, Dracula was pitched as a true story. Now, make of that what you will. Please keep in mind that today Dracula is sold as a fiction book and Dracula also is sold as a fiction book. However, um, the prologue goes on to say that when Bram Stoker originally pitched Dracula, he was told, no, this is too gruesome, it's too graphic, uh, it's especially just coming off the heels of the Jack the Ripper murders, it would just you know, cause panic if we were to publish this um, true story. So uh, he was told, no, it cannot be published, it needs to be heavily edited. So the English version of Dracula that we have had the first 100 pages axed. So the Dracula that we read in English starts actually on page 102 of Bram's original writings. Also, certain characters have been completely erased from the original English version. Apparently, there's a different timeline and a completely different ending in Bram Stoker's original Dracula which we've never gotten to read in English. So again, I personally don't believe in vampires and this book is sold as a fictional book, but who knows how much of it was changed to make it viable for English audiences. Apparently, other publishers around the world didn't have such a problem with the original manuscript of Dracula. For example, if you can find a first edition of the Icelandic version of Dracula, known as Matmir Krana, or Powers of Darkness, it's substantially different, and 
Dracul actually includes a few quotes from Mark Mikrana to show just how completely different these two versions are. So Dacre Stoker says that the clue to finding out exactly what Bram Stoker was talking about and what supposed real life evil he was trying to warn us about lies in finding some of these original first editions of Dracula in languages other than English. So I don't have a copy of those, but if you do, or if you can hunt it down, or if you've read Mark Mikrana in particular, because that's the one that's mentioned in Dracul, please let me know. Tell me how different is it from the English version that we have. And um, tell me what you think. Now, again, I personally don't believe in vampires. I, um, yeah, I don't really think that there is a, a Count Dracula in real life, but Bram originally pitched it as a true story. That doesn't necessarily mean he was telling the truth. Um, but again, the English version of Dracula that we have has been heavily edited. At least a hundred pages are missing from it. There are characters that are missing. Apparently the ending is completely different. So yeah, I think that's intriguing. Um, I would I would love to know what Bram Stoker was trying to warn us about. So. Please let me know your thoughts. If you've read Dracul, I'd love to hear what you think of it. Or um, again, if you have read Dracula in a different language, or if you have a first edition of Dracula in a language other than English, I would love to hear from you and I would love to hear your theories. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for stopping by and who knows, maybe I'll see you guys next time.